Welcome back guys. Uh, today I thought I'd take another look at MX-16. If you remember a few weeks ago I took a look at the beta uh, version, the first beta release of MX-16 and I had some issues with uh, and the NVIDIA drivers um, and uh, overall it was uh, very nice as as is MX-16 all the time. Uh, but when I did the review, I asked if they would take a look at making it a little, a little bit easier for uh, MX-16 users to install their NVIDIA uh, graphics card drivers. So uh, when they came out with the first release candidate over the weekend, I downloaded it and I've been uh, tweaking it and putting it through its paces uh, ever since. And so I thought I'd share with you my thoughts on this first uh, release candidate. Number one, uh, what I did was I basically installed everything that I usually install, which means uh, it's a hardware install. It's to an SSD. It's uh, do it's multi-booting with several other. Uh, operating systems. Windows is on the same computer. Mac OS Sierra. Um, I've got a uh, Manjaro uh, distribution and also an Ubuntu distribution. So um, it's running under real world conditions. Um, I also made sure that I paid close attention to the driver install. And let me share with you what I found on this uh, first release candidate. Number one, Broadcom drivers were installed out of the box. Um, I used them for the install and they were also visible and properly configured when I, uh, when I booted up for the first time. So that is a big plus. Number two, NVIDIA. What I did this time around is I went through the software installer. I went through Synaptic. I selected NVIDIA settings. When I selected NVIDIA settings, it automatically pulled in all of the dependencies. And it installed... 367.44. Now one of the things I think influenced that is the fact that I enabled backports and the test repos on uh, MX-16. In the MX-16 configuration options you can enable uh, backports, Debian backports, Jesse backports, and you can also enable the MX-16 uh, test repo which is what I did. You see here on MX Tools you can enable the test repo installer and Debian Backports installer. That's what I did. So I enabled both of those before I installed NVIDIA. So I enabled both of those and then I installed NVIDIA settings. It automatically pulled in all of the dependencies and I ended up with 367.44 which is and not only that, I did not have to install NVIDIA xconfig. I didn't have to do the pseudo NVIDIA xconfig. I didn't have to do anything. All I did was let the system run the update, run the install, and I rebooted and everything was as you see it here. So that's a huge plus. Um, MX-16, I'm going to use, whenever I install MX-16, I'm going to use that method because it worked perfectly. No problems whatsoever. Now, I don't know if that was by design. I don't know if they um, consciously, uh, deliberately tried to create a process that was easier, but that was about as, as easy as you can get. So, uh, uh, basically, if, if you guys want to try that, Enable the test repo, enable the backports, and then install NVIDIA settings. And it's, as it did for me, it should pull in all of the 
uh, dependencies and give you a uh, properly configured NVIDIA driver. So that's absolutely fantastic. Now I'm going to go through you the through through with you some of the uh, measurements here. So does it allow you to not install a bootloader? Yes, it does, uh, and they have been doing that for as long as I can remember. Uh, that's a, a configuration option when you install. As I said, Wi-Fi, Broadcom, and the dongle both were visible and usable out of the box and that was during the install and also after first boot. Install time is about 12 minutes. It's, it's very fast. Um, boot time is about 13 seconds. The default kernel is 4.7.0-0 BPO.1 and I have the 64-bit version. Uh, now this RAM on first boot strike that because um, I checked that last time. This time I'm reporting the RAM usage fully configured. It's running 459. And I think that's a better measurement because um, I don't really want to know what the RAM consumption is on first boot because I'm not going to leave the system that way. I want to know what's the RAM consumption if I configure it and install everything that I normally use. And that's 459 meg. CPU usage on first boot is 0.03, but uh, 0.05 load average fully configured, which is excellent. The NVIDIA, uh, as I said, I use Synaptic NVIDIA settings with backports and test repos, and I have 367.44. Broadcom Wi-Fi was out of the box. Printer installs, no problem. The printer installation procedure is the same for any other Debian or Ubuntu uh, distribution. The uh, install procedure is the same. Netflix is no problem at all using Google Chrome. I think the default theme is Greybird. I'm still using Greybird. The default icon theme, I believe, is Papyrus. I'm using Fienza. They used to use Fienza by default, and they also include it. Uh, in the available icons. So you can select, if you prefer the older look of Fienza, you can go ahead and use that, which is what I'm doing. The uh, font, I have not messed with the font. Um, Debian doesn't uh, have a great install procedure for uh, infinality fonts at, at, at this point, at least I haven't found it. So I'm using the um, Droid Sans, which is what the system comes configured with. Uh, there are six wallpapers. This is one of them. Um, so that's I'm using one of the uh, default wallpapers. Um, the, the icon sets and the themes, there are lots available. That's really a personal preference. You can take a look at what's available, and if you don't really like it, you can add your own. The desktop environment is XFCE. XFWM4 is the window manager. Uh, it's a Debian-based distribution. It does have LibreOffice. Steam installed, no problem. Now, Battle.net, interestingly, if I use the Wine and Wine Tricks procedure, I can't get it to work. So I had to go through Play on Linux. But the good, the good news is, through Play on Linux, I was able to get Hearth, not only Hearthstone, but Diablo also, working perfectly. I had no issues with this first release candidate. So the folks over at MX16 have done a fantastic job in resolving some of the issues that were uh, evident during the beta install. This first release candidate, candidate is absolutely wonderful and uh, it's gonna stay on my machine. Now, as you can see, down in the bottom left, the system tray, I have the panel. The panel normally comes um, on the left-hand side, vertical. Uh, I preferred it uh, horizontal, so I put it back at the bottom, which they do give you an option for, and uh, that's it, it's absolutely fantastic. Now the uh, update manager is this little box in the system tray and when it turns green there is an update waiting to be 
uh, installed. So if I click that and I click on app get upgrade it's going to tell me what's to be installed and then I can say yes and it'll go through the install process and it says this window can now be closed press any key and that is it then uh, the uh, the little box will become transparent so that's an easy way of knowing uh, whether or not there are Debian updates available now it's it's running the whisker menu uh, I have not changed the coloring uh, I like the uh, theming of the whisker menu the as I mentioned there are a lot so many MX uh, proprietary utilities they give you so many options to help you install configure and maintain your system and so you can see codex installer which I used uh, backports uh, you can change make quick changes to the look you can display the panel vertically horizontally light theme dark theme Firefox dark theme so there are so many proprietary uh, configuration options that MX16 uh, the folks over at MX16 they have put a lot of time into this and it shows and so guys I'm happy to report that MX16 is back at the top of the Debian list in my opinion everything's running perfectly no issues at all try it I'm sure you'll like it uh, if you've been waiting to try Debian this is a great candidate because it does make things so much easier for you it's not your typical Debian installation so guys, thank you very much for stopping by the channel. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you soon. Take care.